my name is Rachel and I'm here today to talk about the books that I read in the month of January. I didn't read a hell of a lot but I did read my first draft for the first time of the novel that I wrote last year. I just had a lot on so I'm pretty happy with what I read this month so I'm just gonna get started with showing them to you. The first thing that I finished this month was Plot and Structure. This is by James Scott Bell and this is all about how to plot and structure your novel. This is a really great book. I would say it mixes between being extensive and introductory. There's some things it goes into a lot of detail with and there's some things that it doesn't. It doesn't go into detail about trope or like romance arcs or things like that but it goes into a lot of detail about how to set out different acts in your novel and the doorways between those acts and things like that so there's places where it really goes in and there's places where it stays just surface level so I gave this four stars it's definitely not the best and it doesn't answer all of your questions but as an introductory book it's fantastic because you can understand everything here. There isn't anything in this book where you're going to be like, oh shit, what are they? What do they mean? What are they talking about? I, I don't know enough about writing because it is an introductory look at the craft. So this was really great and I gave it four stars. I've been reading it since October, I think. I'm um, just dipping in and out of it. So yeah, finished that one really early on in January. The next two books I read, um, I picked up because I had this little like card for the bookshop here with all of the points that I'd accrued over the year. And I was watching Cats and Cameras video and they were talking about the Scott Pilgrim series and I was like, how have I not finished the Scott Pilgrim series? I was reading this at the start of last year. I've read four of them and I've just not finished it. So I decided to use my card to buy volumes five and six and then I finally finished the series, which I adored. I give both of these four stars, which is what I've given all of the series. It's just been such a fantastic thing to read. It's so funny. And the thing that I love about the series is that it is really, really funny. It's really, really plot driven, but it still manages to have really good character development. Like Scott and Ramona have some great character development. I think that's something that is missing from a lot of plot driven graphic novels and that's part of the reason that I don't love them a lot of the time so it's really great to see some character and plot driven uh, graphic novels and I love the Scott Pilgrim series. I can't wait to go home and just reread the whole thing again because I left such a big gap between one to four and then five and six now that I have them all I can just like read them all in a day and I think that'll be really really nice. Next we have a book that every time I think about I knock down the rating of <laughs> So the book is All the Right Places and this is by Jennifer Niven. So when I first finished this, I gave it four stars. Then on reflection, like a day or two later, I gave it three stars. Now I think it's 2.5 stars. It may even go down to two stars. So it's not doing so great on reflection. <laughs> this book is one that I've had on my shelves for a really long time. I got it when I was a little bit younger and I didn't know whether I still wanted to read it but it's one of the books. There's a group of books that I kind of leave to the side and I can only read them at certain times and they are anything to do with someone who loses a sibling because I've lost a sibling and it was extremely hard so it's very hard to read books about it sometimes but also it's kind of nice to read at the same time because it's someone going through what I've been through. So I do have a collection of books and I decided to pick this one up. Yeah I just <laughs> I don't really Really love it. This follows Violet and Theodore. They meet and they are both very sad. Violet has lost her sister before the start of this book and then Theodore has had some depressive episodes and suicide attempts before the book started as well and they meet and it's all about their relationship that forms between them. So there is one thing that I really like about this book and that is Theodore and the depiction of his dealing with depression. As we start the book he isn't depressed anymore. He talks about being depressed like this, I think he calls it being asleep time or something like that. It's basically this passive state where he's not really there. And the way that he talks about it, I really enjoyed because he talks about it like it's this thing that he can't control and like it's something that takes over and he doesn't want that. And I think there's this tendency to discuss depression as like, just get up and get out the house and it's not really like that and I think it showed it really well and it showed really well how like this isn't him like depression is something that affects him but he isn't a, he isn't just depressed that's not the thing that completely makes up who he is and he's a really well-built character outside of just being someone who suffers with depression so I really enjoyed that however I did not like Viola the girl in it I just I just didn't think she had a very well-formed character and I understand why some people talk about this as glorifying suicide. I don't necessarily think that it does, but the fact that I can't say it doesn't means that erring on the side of caution, I think it must do a little bit because I can't say that it doesn't. The thing that annoyed me the most is that these two, when they are sad, when they are depressed, when they talk to each other, they quote back and forth 
things to each other. So they quote like Sylvia Plath of Virginia Woolf, like people who famously suffered with mental health problems. What I really didn't like is that at one point Virginia Woolf's suicide letter is quoted between them and that really annoyed me because that isn't a piece of fiction, that isn't something that was for general consumption, she probably didn't have any intention of that becoming a famous like piece of writing that everybody knows about and I felt really uncomfortable with the fact that Jennifer Niven had used someone's suicide letter as a plot device in her book that made me feel really uncomfortable. So yeah, wasn't the greatest fan of this book. Can't say that I really want to pick up more of Jennifer Niven's work. So we'll see if I ever do that, but I can't see myself doing it at the moment because it kind of annoyed me a little bit. So then we have the other books that I managed to finish this month and they are all Adam Silvera. So I read History Is All You Left Me in December and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars, I think. Um, but on reflection, I really enjoyed that book and it's like I've I've I like it more the more that I think back on it and I started noticing this just after Christmas and I had a few of Adam Silvera's books so I decided to pick them up. Now I'm not going to do this in the order that I read them, I'm going to do this in the order that I enjoyed them because that just end on a happy note, end with the one I enjoyed the most. So we're going to start with more happy than not which is Adam Silvera's debut novel. So in this book we follow a boy called Aaron and he is dealing with some pretty shitty life situations at the start of this book. He also has a girlfriend called Genevieve and he is trying to deal with his problems but he finds himself instead of leaning on his girlfriend leaning on his new friend Thomas who he has just met and we basically see everything blow up from there. I don't love this. <laughs> This is the last Adam Silvera book that I read and I finished it on January 31st. Is it 31 days or 30 days? I think it was 31. <laughs> I don't know any of the days in the months. But I finished this on the last day of January and I just didn't love it. And I will say that it's my personal preference and it's what I look for in LGBT plus fiction that it didn't provide. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't like it and I wouldn't not pick it up just because I didn't like it. So I read LGBT fiction because I want to see positive stories. I've mentioned this before. I know it's a bit weird, but I feel acceptance vicariously through stories like this. So if a book gets published where there are two women in a relationship as being the central plot of that book, I will feel accepted because that book got published. I will feel like, oh, people are more accepting of me because a book like that gets published, because a book like that's a bestseller. Like, I feel like people accept me and my relationships. So this is negative. This is very, very negative. And I would say it's too negative. There is basically everything that happens in this book is a negative that comes of the main character being gay, or at least that's how it's presented. And even to the ending, I wanted some redemption for some characters that acted inexcusably and I there was a moment where I thought I was going to get that and then it didn't happen and the ending it just makes it all seem pointless. What's the point in fighting when that ending's going to happen anyway? This was just extremely negative and I didn't enjoy it and I really, really, really hated the relationship between Aaron and Thomas. I hated the way Aaron treated him and the reason that I hated it so much is that I just feel like there is this stereotype with people. Like if people come out to their friend, I'm not saying I had this experience, but I know that this is an experience people have where say they come out to a same-sex friend, their same-sex friend will be like, oh, does that mean you fancy me? Or people say, about wanting gay people wanting to turn them or things like that there's these like ridiculous assumptions that really piss me off that I think this book played into and I don't like that so yeah I gave this book three stars because it was readable and I I read it fast and I was interested but it kind of annoyed me and I don't know whether I should have given it like 2.5 stars really really thought I was gonna enjoy this one really did not so there we go however I've enjoyed everything else by Adam Silvera and the next two books are also by Adam Silvera, so that's good. The second one is They Both Die at the End. Oh, I liked this book. So I read this book in a day. The next book you're gonna see, I read in a day. And then the next day, I read this book. So that was a lot of Adam Silvera in a very short amount of time and it was very, 
like I had feelings that were intense because <laughs> that's what you get when you read an Adam Silvera book. So this book follows two boys, Rufus and Mateo, and it is their last day on earth. They get a phone call in the morning saying today will be your last day. It doesn't tell them how they're gonna die. And basically they both go on a nap called Last Friends and find each other and spend their last day together. That is the basic premise of this book. I adored this book. I thought it was just adorable. I loved the relationship in it. I love Rufus and Mateo together. I liked that it tends to be you have a hate to love trope where the two characters have very different personalities but they allow each other to develop with each other. So say someone is really controlling, the other one will be really laid back and they will hate each other at first but they will sort of learn to take the best of each other and then like each other and start to do all that shit. This didn't do that. It didn't have the hate to love first. It just had people like learn from each other, which is what I really enjoyed. I loved Rufus in the way that he did not push Mateo at any point, even when he started to recognize certain signs and realize his own feelings. And even though it was his last day, he didn't try and push and be like, no, you have to do this. No, no, no. He didn't do that at all. He was very like, let him come to terms with things on his own. If he doesn't come to terms with it, that's fine, which I love. The ending of this book absolutely devastated me. It got to the point where I was crying so much that I was like furiously trying to wipe my eyes so that I could see the page because I couldn't tell what it said because the tears were forming so fast. That sounds so pathetic. I'm I'm a person who doesn't cry at real life, but just cries at movies and books all the time. And yeah, like, oh, I had feelings. There were some feelings and they hurt. <laughs> One of the things that I will say is that this book is often criticised for being insta-lovey because it takes place on one day and that is something because I'd heard that criticism so much I found myself kind of already waiting for it and looking for it as I was reading it and I didn't find that I thought yes you could argue that it's in still love but if it was your last day on earth and you found someone you could connect with I feel like you would try and pull even more of a connection out of it because it's your last day if you feel even a little bit of attraction you would push it further because it's your last fucking day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think the criticism of this as insta lovey is a bit unfair and, and not necessarily what I would call it because I think most people would behave that way if it was their last day on earth and their last chance to ever connect with someone like that. Finally, we have the last book I read this month. This is my favourite book of the month. It was my favourite book of the year so far, 100%. I'm just, I'm so in love with this book that I can't even and it is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. Now I will say, snip the epilogue off, I am treating this as having no epilogue <laughs> and I'm always going to treat it that way. I gave it four and a half stars and I knocked the half star off because of the epilogue but I'm going to pretend the epilogue isn't there and that's fine because I can do that, it's my book. If I want I can literally cut it out, it's my book, I bought it. So ridiculous. I'm not going to go into too many details about this because I have filmed a full review of this book. I don't film a lot of reviews but I do tend to film reviews of books that I've really enjoyed and this is one that I loved a lot so I have filmed a full review of it. However like I said I adored it, I thought it was fantastic, I love the way that it's split up with Becky Albertalli doing all of Arthur's chapters and Adam Silvera doing all of Ben's chapters. Anyone who's read this book and has read any of the two authors of the works cannot argue that that is how the characters divide. I did watch some interviews online and I can't remember if they stated which character they did but yeah if you are familiar with either of their writing you can tell within a second within the first sentence of both of their narratives which one they wrote <laughs> because they're very distinctive and that's what I enjoyed it really did feel like two different separate characters coming together because you had these really distinctive writing styles so that was something I really thought worked with the story and the writing style of this book. I loved the characters. I loved Ben. I loved Arthur. I loved Ben's best friend. Oh my god did I love that guy. <laughs> so fucking funny. I loved the parents. Like everything in here was just good. Like it was a good book. I really like this book and I really want to reread it but I'm trying to make myself wait a little bit. However I can't say how long that's going to be and I feel like I might also just reread it this month. Who knows? But this is great and I love it. Snip the epilogue off, ignore that ever existed. 
this is my life. I love it. So these are the books that I finished in the month of January. I'm pretty happy with that because I was also busy in January and doing other stuff. So I think I did pretty well. The only other thing that I did start in January was Anna Karenina. I mentioned that I really want to read this this year. This is obviously the Leo Tolstoy classic and I have read 51 pages of this so far. So yeah, this is going well. I'm quite enjoying it. It's it's weird because it's classic Russian literature. You assume it's going to be really hard to read. Also, because you have this ridiculously long list of characters in the front, you think, Jesus, I'm going to get confused by how many characters there are. Four pages of a character list. But actually, it's really easy to tell who everyone is and to follow. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far and definitely hoping to continue it in the month of February, though I do not think I will finish it. That is everything that I've read in January. If you've read any of these books, please comment down below and let me know what you thought about them or if you disagree with me and dislike them or like them. I'm sorry if you like More Happy Than Not. I know that it is something that people love and I'm sorry I didn't like it. It's just not my kind of LGBT plus fiction. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.